In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome, everyone. Once again, we offer this Mass for all our intentions that we bring before the Lord in this Mass. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Absalom happened to run into some of David's followers. Absalom was riding a mule, and the mule passed under the thick branches of a great oak. Absalom's head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth. While the mule he was riding went on, someone saw this and told Joab, I have just seen Absalom, he said, hanging from an oak. And Joab took three lances in his hand and thrust them into Absalom's heart while he was still alive there in the oak tree. David was sitting between the two gates. The lookout had gone up to the roof of the gate on the ramparts. He looked up and saw a man running all by himself. The watch called out to the king and told him. The king said, Move aside and stand there. He moved aside and stood waiting. Then the Cushite arrived. Good news for my lord the king, cried the Cushite. The lord has vindicated your cause today by ridding you of all who rebelled against you. Is all well with young Absalom? The king asked the Cushite. May the enemies of my lord the king the Kushite answered, and all who rebelled against you to your hurt share the lot of that young man. The king shuddered. He went up to the room over the gate and burst into tears, and weeping said, My son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died in your place? Absalom, my son, my son. Word was brought to Joab. The king is now weeping and mourning for Absalom. And the day's victory was turned to mourning for all the troops because they learned that the king was grieving for his son. And the troops returned stealthily that day to the town as troops creep back ashamed when routed in battle. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Listen, Lord, and answer me. Turn your ear, O Lord, and give answer, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am faithful. Save the servant who trusts in you. Listen, Lord, and answer me. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. Give joy to your servant, O Lord, for to you I lift up my soul. Listen, Lord, and answer me. O Lord, you are good and forgiving, full of love to all who call. Give heed, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the sound of my voice. 
Listen, Lord, and answer me. Please stand to greet the gospel. <clears throat> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. He bore our sickness and endured our suffering. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered round him, and he stayed by the lakeside. Then one of the synagogue officials came up, Jairus by name, and seeing him, fell at his feet and pleaded with him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is desperately sick. Do come and lay your hands on her to make her better and save her life. Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed him, and they were pressing all around him. Now there was a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years. After long and painful treatment under various doctors, she had spent all she had without being any the better for it. In fact, she was getting worse. She had heard about Jesus, and she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his cloak. If I can touch even his clothes, she had told herself, I shall be well again. And the source of the bleeding dried up instantly, and she felt in herself that she was cured of her complaint. Immediately aware that power had gone out from him, Jesus turned round in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing round you, and yet you say, Who touched me? But he continued to look all around to see who had done it. Then the woman came forward, frightened and trembling, because she knew what had happened to her. And she fell at his feet and told him the whole truth. My daughter, he said, your faith has restored you to health. Go in peace and be free from your complaint. While he was still speaking, some people arrived from the house of the synagogue official to say, your daughter is dead. Why put the master to any further trouble? But Jesus had overheard this remark of theirs, and he said to the official, Do not be afraid. Only have faith. And he allowed no one to go with him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. So they came to the official's house, and Jesus noticed all the commotion with people weeping and wailing and restrainedly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and crying? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. So he turned them all out, and taking with him the child's father and mother and his own companions, he went into the place where the child lay. And taking the child by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means, Little girl, I tell you to get up. The little girl got up at once and began to walk about, for she was 12 years old. At this, they were overcome, they were overcome with astonishment, and he ordered them strictly not to let anyone know about it, and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Our gospel reading today from St. Mark once again invites us to a profound encounter with Jesus as a source of healing for all or for both our physical and spiritual ailments. And in this passage, we witness the desperation of Jairus, the synagogue official, and also the great faith of the woman who is suffering or suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years. And both their stories remind us um, that in, in our moments of, of our need, in our moments of desperation, in our moments of despair or crisis, we can always approach Jesus with an unshakable faith and unwavering trust. Jairus, of course, teaches us a, you know, that persistence and perseverance in prayer. 
And despite the, the urgency of his own situation, he never loses hope. Rather, he models for us um, the importance of laying all our needs, our concerns before Jesus, trusting that indeed his wisdom, his time is perfect. And of course, uh, the woman with, you know, suffering from, from a hemorrhage also embodies a profound faith because her touch of Jesus' clothes reflects the power of, you know, a sincere and a trusting heart. And my brothers and sisters, this is a reminder for us that in our own brokenness, in our own woundedness, in our own sinfulness, our faith can always be a source of healing, can always be a source of strength, a source of restoration, just like that of the woman with a hemorrhage, I mean, suffering with a hemorrhage and gyrus. And their stories, both their stories um, remind us that um, Jesus' or, or God's, God's power is so great. You know, Jesus demonstrates his compassion and his healing power. He responds to our faith even with miracles. And, of course, showing us his and boundless, boundless love. And he always drew us ever close to himself because he knows that it only takes our faith, our confidence, our, our trust in him like that of Jairus and, and the, the woman suffering with hemorrhage to, to help us, for us to be able to experience through healing in all the the situations, the, the challenges, the, set, the setbacks that we encounter in our day-to-day -day life. And so, brothers and sisters, as we continue with our Mass, as we continue with our journey of faith, you know, embracing all the daily challenges, the setbacks, the desperations we, we encounter every day, let us approach Jesus with, you know, with a profound faith, with a deep trust and confidence in God, just like that of Chiris and the woman suffering from hemorrhage. And recognizing or knowing that his love is indeed a powerful remedy for all our needs, but also, a, I mean, um, a deeper source of strength and joy and inspiration to, to, for us to, to share that gift of healing as well for others, especially those who are in most or who, are need, who need it the most. Amen. Confident that when we pray with faith to God the Father, He will respond to our request with open hearted generosity, and we now bring our needs before Him. That the church throughout the world may be a symbol of Christ's healing work by her care for those who are sick in body, mind, and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may cooperate with those who are engaged in providing clean and healthy environment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That doctors and nurses and those who care for the sick may show the compassion and gentleness of Jesus in caring for the least of his brethren. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That medical science may soon find cure for rare diseases which prevent those who suffer from them from living full and active life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who mourn the death of a child may be consoled by their faith in the gentle mercy of our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to go on trusting in you and to have faith in the healing power of your Son, who binds up all our wounds. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you through the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all your saints who have, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Thanks, everyone, for being here this morning. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you and your family, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has been offered. Go in the love and peace of Christ. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. 